May we be of some assistance, Inspector Smythe? General Farmsworth Armstead, one of the six surviving Waterloo Tontine ticket holders, has been murdered. Waterloo Tontine? The Waterloo Tontine was a lottery of sorts, Watson. It was set up in 1815 to aid the veterans of the Battle of Waterloo. Wellington's victory over Napoleon? Yes, of course. I knew that. Quite an ingenious plan on the part of the founders. One pound bought a ticket in the name of some young relative. The ticket proceeds amounted to over a million pounds. Half went immediately to veterans and their families for medical and hardship expenses. What became of the other half? It all went into an account at the Bank of England where it's been collecting interest all these years. Very clever. And how does one win this prize? Simply by outliving all the other ticket holders. Mm, and now you say one of them has been murdered. Very suspicious. Who are the remaining five? The oldest is Captain Robert Jurgens, age 82. Then there are Anita and Claire Thomas, who are 80-year-old twins. William Rowland is 79, and Peter Dudley is 77. Poor General Armstead was the youngest at 74. Seems as if he would have had the best chance to outlive the others. I recall reading something in the Times about a big to-do involving the Tontine survivors on the 18th. That's correct. The Waterloo Anniversary Banquet at the Langham Hotel. Why is the name Armstead familiar? He was a noted art collector, I believe. He also authored a well-known book, Treasures of the Conquerors. Quite right. At the time of his death, General Armstead was working on a revised edition for his publisher, Nurgett and Company. It was to contain an entirely new chapter on a fabulous diamond called the Polar Star, which at one point belonged to Joseph Bonaparte, Napoleon's brother. The general had new information which traced the gem to its present owner. Tell me about the circumstances of General Armstead's death. Oh yes, of course. Well, let me see. At 10 o'clock this morning, the General's valet, David Sennett, admitted a call to the General's study. Sennett says he did not know the man. He was elderly and spoke with a French accent. Sennett told him the General never saw anyone in the morning while he was at work. The gentleman insisted that if Armstead read the letter he had with him, he would make an exception. And so it was. The Senate took the letter in, Armstead read it, and went quite pale. He told Senate to let the gentleman in. Sensing something amiss, Senate dawdled in the area of the study for the next 15 minutes or so. Then he heard the distinct sound of sword play. He tried to enter the study, but found the door locked. Then he heard the crash of breaking glass. He raced to the kitchen and out the back door to enter the study from the garden. By the time he got there, the caller had vanished and the general was leaning heavily against a shattered display case of military miniatures. Before Senate could assist him, he dropped a saber from his hand and fell over dead. And I take it the letter which so upset the general was nowhere to be found. Correct, Mr. Holmes. Well, we shall put our brains and our feet to the task. I found the general leaning over the display case. He had his saber in hand, the one that usually resides above the fireplace. Mm -hmm. I understand he was a collector of military figures. Yes, the display in the study shows the last great British charge that swept the French from Waterloo. Is there any significance to the fact that the figure of Napoleon is facing backward? How strange. Perhaps I should go and set it straight. No, don't touch it. Not until the police have concluded their investigation. Oh, yes, yes, of course, of course. I also noticed the portrait over the display case. The late Mrs. Armstead. Do I detect a note of hostility? I must admit we did not get on very well. But I might say that Mrs. Armstead did not get on very well with anyone, including the general. You mean they didn't marry for love? Hardly. Lord Fitch, Mrs. Armstead's father, arranged the match. Her dowry was very generous. Lord Fitch would pay to any amount to ensure that he would not be left with a spinster daughter, especially such a nasty one. If there was no love lost between them, why did he keep her portrait in his study? Actually, it was put up there to needle Mrs. Armstead's brother, the present Lord Fitch. 
He never approved of the marriage. Even after her death, they were involved with mutual business affairs. They jointly owned stock or some such thing. Tell me, do you know what the general was doing at the time the intruder arrived? Yes, he was working on the new section of his book, the part that concerns the gem, the polar star. It was very interesting, really. It traces the ownership of the gem to the brother of Napoleon, to the Russian Count Rostov. Unfortunately, the gem was stolen from the Count three years ago. As a matter of fact, the General just received a letter from a Pierre Montan who said that he was willing to divulge the name of the present owner of the gem for the agreed upon fee. Do you know where Mr. Montan might be found? I believe he's staying at the Bridge House Hotel. Did the General have any encounters with anyone out of the ordinary in the past several days? Not really. An old friend of his has been in town, Jean-Paul Girard. Neither the general nor I have seen him in 40 years. In fact, they were going to meet this afternoon at the French Embassy. I'm obviously curious about the general's last visitor. Could you describe him, please? He was an old man, a rather short fellow. He walked with a cane and carried a carpet bag. Did he give a name? No, no. He simply wanted to see the general, and he handed me a letter to take into him. Did you read it? No, no. It was in an envelope, rather yellowed with age, though I noticed it was addressed in a graceful hand to Captain Armstead, 12th Tazars, the general's old regiment. When the general read it, he went very pale. Then he asked me to admit the gentleman. Tell me. When you finally got into the room from the garden, were the study doors still locked? Yes. I noticed that there is an eight-foot fence surrounding the garden, and that the only way into the garden or out of it is through the kitchen door or the study. How terribly observant, Holmes. <laughs>